Once upon a bunch of trees with three chimpanzees, then Dad went out ate some magical berries. Went all the way back home, here's a mountain of babies. Hi, welcome back. It's me, Eli, and you're watching Let's Talk Episode 5. Now, um, before we get into this episode, I'd like to tell you that I'm going to start calling myself Eli MC as my YouTube name because I think it's got a ring to it and it sounds really good. And also, my real life name is Eli McConaughey and MC are the first few, the first two letters of my last name plus there's um a boy that I make videos with sometimes called Nether MC and he's the one that I have um made those mystery of the brines and Minecraft let's play and stuff videos with him that will never be continued and we're just legacy but um anyway um that's an uh, having a friend called nether mc is another good reason for me to call myself eli mc because they just so happen to both have mc in their name which means it sounds like we're kind of part of some sort of club or duo or something so that's a good bonus okay now, on with the talking. In this episode, I'm going to give you a few updates about a few things. Mainly about some of the characters on my YouTube channel. Firstly, I'm going to be talking about Flaragon. And in most of my videos so far, I have showing Flavagon being extremely sensitive to water and being able to die really quickly after only a few minutes or seconds after touching it. But I'm changing that now because I think it needs to change because Flavagon is supposed to be a really powerful bad guy and hard to defeat. So I'm um, and therefore having him being really, really susceptible to water is a really weird idea because it means he's really weak and easy to defeat really quickly. And Flavagon is a fiery, a fiery creature and that's why I decided for him to be um susceptible to water but it, I still don't think it's a very good idea because Flaragon has an extremely hot body temperature of probably about a thousand degrees Celsius. So he's and is kind of lava like then, so therefore I think it would make sense that he can be damaged with water, but it takes copious amounts of water to actually kill him. If Flavagon was getting sprayed by a hose or a water gun it probably wouldn't do much damage and he just hiss and steam a bit. And it, it takes lots and lots and lots of water to actually defeat him. A little bits of water are quite useless and they cause him to hiss and steam a bit, but they don't do any serious damage. Flaragon can probably swim about... Flavagon would probably have to swim about one kilometre in the ocean before he would actually die. And um if he was um going to be um submerged in the ocean completely, it would probably take about half an hour for him to actually die 
or if he was um, caught in the rain, he would probably last six or seven hours. And um, if he was knee deep in water, he'd probably last about four hours. And um, even if you managed to blast him with a powerful jet of water for a, a long time, he it probably wouldn't very work very well because he can teleport whenever he wants, requiring little to no effort. So if you try and shoot him with a jet of water, chances are he's going to teleport out of the way and he's not going to get hit and it's not going to do much damage to him anyway. So therefore, trying to kill Flaragon with water is possible but extremely difficult and takes a really long time. Holy water is a bit more effective against him because it's holy and it um and it um and Flaragon is a devil like character so therefore holy effects are quite bad for him. So I'd say that if you used holy water you could probably kill Flaragon in about like maybe 20 minutes just by squirting him with a jet of it which is definitely a much better option than regular water if you're trying to defeat him. Plus Flaragon has fire powers and he can regenerate health and strengthen himself by taking fire damage or swimming in lava, because he kind of absorbs the heat, making and kind of laps it up and grows stronger. So, um, Flaragon can use his ability to shoot fireballs to shoot himself and therefore heal himself. And, um, sometimes he also carries around bottles of lava that he can drink and they heal himself and make him stronger. These bottles are made of a rare metal called Infernoite, which is the evil hellish version of the angelic and heavenly Godnesmite. While Godnesmite is blue and yellow in colour, Infernoite is red and black in colour and it's got very magical and evil properties and it's, and it's probably really hot to the touch and it also acts as a really good insulator for heat and keeps heat in the stuff and that's why it's so good for bottles of lava because when you put lava in an infernoite bottle it stays hot forever and Flaragon likes to carry around bottles of Infernoite. And um they um and they keep the lava warm and any time Flavagon has gone swimming through a little pool or a pond of water or if he crosses a river or whatever, he'll take a sip of his lava bottles which will instantly heal him. I'm going to um I'm going to make a video featuring Flavagon as the main character next year and um it will um demonstrate the fact that um he can be healed by drinking lava and um, water can damage him, but it takes copious, copious amounts of it to kill him. Now, I am going to talk about Fleshka herself. 
And, um, um, a lot of people who, who I have talked to, um, said that, um, most good characters have some sort of personality flaws and are not quite perfect, which, um, apparently um, makes them more realistic and relatable because it's normal for real-life people to not be perfect and to sometimes make mistakes and not get everything right and to sometimes have some flaws. And I've decided that Fleshka probably needs some so I've decided that one of Fleshka's personality flaws is that um, she's shy in front of new people, and if she meet and if she meets people that she um um doesn't know yet, or she's only new to, she'd be a a little bit shy. Plus, um, another one of Fleshka's main flaws is that she's po possibly um a little bit ignorant, and that she um doesn't always know if a monster is good or bad, and that um she might sometimes attack an innocent she might sometimes attack an innocent monster um thinking it's bad when it's actually not but um she never does this deliberately and she tries to only fight for the greater good but it's still a mistake that she may make accidentally And, um, yeah, um, there's probably, um, all sorts of other, there's probably a few other flaws that Fleshka might have, but I, those two that I've mentioned are the main ones. To recap, it's, um, the shyness and ignorance, basically. Flesh, Fleshkew and Spiralump already have some sort of um character flaws in that um Spiralump is um a bit greedy and he um eats lots and um and he's and he's a sweet tooth and he um and he likes eat, eat, eating a lot and I haven't shown him eating much in most of my videos but that's because um there hasn't really been much food for him to eat on these adventures that he's been going on and um but um when he's at, at home or when he's um living his normal life he eats a lot of food every day and um and um Fleshkew's flaws are that he's um he's quite cheeky and sometimes he does really naughty monkey things like how he destroyed the cake in the 100 subscriber special and stuff and keep in mind that just because Fleshka, Fleshkew and Spiralump have flaws does not mean they're bad because they've got a lot of good things about them too and they're heroic and they save the world and um, fight monsters and do heroic things it's, it's, which is quite normal because most people in the real world have both bad and good things about them. 
And that pretty much sums up today's video. So, bye. I'll see you next episode.